Welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. I'm Christina Whitney, and we have with us Kim Sandberg. And we're studio educators here at Handy Quilter. We have a special episode. Every episode is a special episode it is. in my book. It is. <laughs> but we are going to be talking about picking a long arm machine. Yes. So we get a lot of calls from people mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. are concerned about what they should be looking for in a long arm. Yep. If a long arm is what they need, mm -hmm. of course it's what you need. Of course. Um, <laughs> but we want to go through some different tips and uh -huh. ideas and questions that you should be thinking about as you choose which long arm is going to work best for you. Exactly. So, Kim, Let's we start. have a list. We do. We have a list. And we're going to start right at the top, okay. shall we? Okay. So, the first question is, what does a long arm do exactly? Believe it or not, this is actually a question you want to ask. So, Christina, what can you do with a long arm? Anything. <laughs> That's the fun answer. So, so specifically, Okay, so the first thing that people mm -hmm. use long arms for, the most common way, mm -hmm. is to finish quilts. That's right. So you have your backing, your batting, and your quilt top, mm -hmm. and you are going to be quilting to stitch those three layers together mm -hmm. to create that finished quilt top. Yep. Or quilt. Yeah, exactly. And most people tend to think of a long arm that's on a frame like this. Um, but a machine that's like our Capri right here, this is also a long arm and yep. it is not on a frame so so this is a frame mounted that one is a stationary the biggest difference between the two is the way that you move the either the machine or the fabric mm -hmm. so with a long arm you're going to be physically a long arm a frame mounted long arm <laughs> you you're go. going to be moving the machine and that's going to be creating that stitch pattern right whereas on the stationary machine want to put those hands down there you are going to be moving the fabric yep. and the that motion of the fabric moving is what's going to create that stitching exactly they both accomplish the same thing the only difference is um, how you're laying down that stitch yeah and some people feel a lot more comfortable doing the moving the machine mm -hmm. and some people feel more comfortable moving the fabric so if you've been doing a lot of long arm or not long arming a lot of quilting, quilting. on a domestic machine mm -hmm. It might be a more um, an easier transition yep. to go to a stationary machine because you're used to moving that fabric. Mm -hmm. But I always recommend people test drive both styles yes. of machines before purchasing a long arm exactly. and see what you do like or don't like about one or the other. Exactly, so. exactly. So that's the nuts and bolts of what a long arm machine is. It really, it's just a really big sewing machine, right? Exactly. Yep. A really big sewing machine which is awesome. Okay, so the next thing um, that we recommend is that you ask your quilting committee for some advice. We know that as quilters, we love to get together and chat about stuff. Uh, we have guilds, we have our friends, we have our online social media, um, you go to retreats, you do all these fun things. Ask your friends, ask them. And we have a couple of questions that we recommend that you ask or that, that get asked all the time. Yeah. Okay. So ask them what type of long arms they own. Um, ask them what they love about their long arm or what they maybe wish was a little different. Because it's, it's good to kind of get that, you know, take that advice from somebody who's walked down that road. And then ask them how their service is from where they purchase their machine. Because that is important. We'll talk yeah. about that a little bit more later. And then ask them about how they learned to use their long arm which is an important thing, right, Christina? Very important. <laughs> Very important. Yeah. Although it's a sewing machine, um, the way that you use it is a little bit different, <laughs> as we bit. mentioned. Yeah. So there's a little bit of a different learning curve with it. So you want to make sure and find out what education options are available. Yeah. Definitely. So, so the next question. OK. Long arms are huge. <laughs> How much space do I need? That is a big deal. It is. I know for deal. me personally, <laughs> in my house, I have about half an inch on one side of my machine. Me too. And a hallway on the other side. Uh -huh. And to get to the back of my machine, I do this. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Do so, the little MC hammer <laughs> over the back. Exactly. We should have worn MC hammer we pants. We should have. Sorry, we didn't coordinate as well as we should have on this one. Um, so yeah, there's definitely that issue of space, right? Yes. 
But the frames come in different sizes. Yes, they do. So you can set them up. They, they come normally in a 10 or a 12 inch. <laughs> 12 <laughs> foot. <laughs> a little bit bigger. And you can set those up at eight foot. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to go really small, you could even do a six foot. Mm -hmm. Just there are different ways that you can configure the frames to make it fit. Exactly. There's also our little the little foot frame. I almost called it the little buddy. That's the accessory, the accessory. that goes with the little buddy, um, with the little foot. Goodness gracious. The little foot mm -hmm. frame is what we call a kind of a hooping system. Yes. So it doesn't roll the fabric like the regular frame mounted, mm -hmm. but you can do any size quilt. And this is a yeah. five foot frame. Yep. So if you're limited on space, this is definitely a good option for you. Exactly. And we also have on our website, mm -hmm. if you go and look at each machine, there is a sheet on there that will show you the space that you need mm -hmm. to be able to fit that frame. And granted, it, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. It does. Um, so like I said, mine's squished into the corner a little bit more than mm -hmm. what is shown on those diagrams. Yeah. But that'll give you a kind of a ballpark of where you need to start from. Exactly. Um, and I actually saw a tip in a magazine recently. I cannot remember which magazine it was, but they, uh, they recommended that you get some uh, like painters tape out and you tape out the space on the floor so that you can see how much space it's really gonna take. In some instances, you actually can be pleasantly surprised and go, oh, in this bedroom that's 10 by 12 feet, I absolutely can fit a 10 foot frame, no problem. Yeah. So there's a few little tricks there. Um, another thing to consider is if you really do have that smaller space um, beyond the little foot frame, even the five feet don't fit. That's where perhaps a, a um, stationary machine fits really well. Um, the Capri actually has a 32 inch by 36 inch footprint. It's our smallest footprint. So depending on space, there, there are options to fit in pretty much any space, right? Yeah. The nice thing about the Capri is that you can put it on wheels mm -hmm. and you can also put table extensions on the side yep. that fold down. So when you're not using that machine, you can push it out of the way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take up very much space, but then when you are actually using it, you can maybe roll it out in the middle of the room, put those table extensions mm -hmm. up and it doubles your table space. It does, it so. does. So there's lots of good options there. Yeah. So I think that kind of answers that question. Long arms, yes. people tend to think that they're huge, but there's lots of options. Trust me, we can make one fit in pretty much any space, right? We get creative. And if you want to comment and say where you have your machine stashed, mm -hmm. I've heard of garages, oh, yeah. living rooms. I've heard people that have actually knocked out walls between two bedrooms. <laughs> uh -huh. And so they have to go out of one bedroom and in the other bedroom to get to the other side. Yeah. People get creative. They do. They definitely do. I've even okay. seen people put a little foot frame in a motorhome <laughs> that they put in one of those pop outs. So you can, uh, you can make it fit if you really want to. Trust yep. me, you can do it. You yep. can do it. So our next okay. question is... Bigger talking... is always better, <laughs> except when it isn't. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk throat space. So let's talk about throat space. Christina, what exactly does throat space mean? Okay, So let's take a space. look at the Amara here. Let me bring this up here. Move my notes out of the way. The throat space is from the back of the machine here mm -hmm. up to your needle. That's exactly right. So on the Amara, how, how big is that? The throat space on this Amara is 20 inches. Okay. That doesn't mean that you can quilt 20 inches. Right. Because again, it's measuring from here, but you've got poles in the way. That's right. So that takes up a little bit of your space. It does. And there's another important thing to consider because right now we just have the leaders on those poles. So we're not moving as much exactly. space. What happens to this take up pole right here as we quilt? So this is the take up pole is where you roll up the quilt that you've already quilted. Mm -hmm. So as you get to the bottom of your quilt, you're going to have some buildup right mm -hmm. here from what you've already done. Yeah. And that will create, you know, even more space here between the back of the machine and, and the, the pole. Exactly. So your throat space or your quiltable area will shrink a little bit as you're exactly. progressing in your quilt. Exactly. And that will change a lot depending on what type of quilt you're doing, the mm -hmm. size of the quilt, mm -hmm. what kind of backing and batting. Yeah. 
Yeah. So if you're doing a, a quilt that has, uh, for example, minky on the back and you're and it's got flannel on the front and you're using a really puffy batting, you're probably going to lose even more space. Yep. Um, a good rule of thumb is to plan uh, when you hear that 20 inch throat space, you say to yourself, OK, take away about four inches four to six inches depending on the project you're working on and that's the size of design you'd be able to quilt. So with an Amara you'd be able to do up to a 16 inch uh, design. With something like the Moxie that has a 15 inch throat space you'd be able to do up to an 11 inch design. Yeah. So, And that, that's kind of the higher end. I, yeah. I usually tend to go a little bit smaller because a little more conservative. I don't want to get to the bottom of my quilt. Uh -oh. Uh -uh. and run out of space. Yeah, and not and be able to with, do that same design. Yeah. And that's with kind of a computerized design or a panograph if you're mm -hmm. quilting from the back. If you're just quilting free motion, yeah. you don't have to worry about that. Nope, nope you totally you don't. make it work. <laughs> so, so remember that, that uh, and what we mean by bigger is always better except when it isn't. There's another really important thing to remember if you're doing free motion quilting, and Christina yes. can show you this again, there really is a sweet spot where you do most of the quilting. So, um, you know, we talk about these being long arm machines with the joke that long armors have long arms. <laughs> well, guess what? There is only a certain, yeah, Christina showed us her long arms there. There is, there is a certain amount of space that's actually very comfortable to quilt in. So uh, it's, it's really about the first, what, 12? I say about the first 12 inches. So I brought the machine all the way forward as far as it would go. Mm -hmm. And I have this one set up in clear view. So I, um, if people are concerned about why I don't have my top pole here, it's set up in clear view. Right. Um, but yeah, the machine's as far forward as it can go. So I usually say from about here to about here, about 12 inches, that's where I want to be working if I'm doing micro quilting, mm -hmm. ruler work, um, even just free motion here. Yeah. So I'm not reaching and yep. leaning over the machine. If I were running a Pro Stitcher, the computerized mm -hmm. program, I could use all the way to the very back because exactly. I'm not the one that's reaching and doing the work. The machine is doing it for yep. me. Yep. So, January 2022 brings a really awesome promotion if you're looking to buy a machine. For only $20.22, you can get shipping with the purchase of a machine. Or you could add a great accessory for that same price for $20.22 of either a little buddy electromagnetic channel locks, a highlight, or a secret drawer with the purchase of a machine. Be sure to contact your local retailer or visit handyquilter.com for more details. So those are things to consider. If you are gonna be doing all free motion uh, quilting on the machine, and especially if you are a little tight on space, the, the smaller throat space might actually be the perfect fit for what you need. If you're planning on adding that computer to it, going bigger, I've never ever heard somebody say, I wish I would have bought the smaller machine. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody always wants the bigger. So just a couple of things to consider there yeah. with that. And if you're thinking about maybe starting a business to mm -hmm. help pay for your machine, yep. then bigger is better. Is better. And with the computerized, because you can get a lot more accomplished in one pass without mm -hmm. advancing your fabric. And so yeah, that's an instance where I would say go bigger yep. for sure. Exactly, exactly. Okay. What's our next question? Our next question is, and this is a bunch mashed, mashed together. I'm not artistic. I don't want to spend the time learning how to free motion. What about that newfangled computer robotic system thing? So what about that, oh. Christina? What about the Pro Stitcher? <laughs> how do you decide if adding a Pro Stitcher to your machine is right for you? What are the kind of questions we should be asking ourselves for that? Do you know how to work a smartphone? Yes, that's important. <laughs> no, so that was just a joke, uh, but not really. So you need to have a little bit of confidence in your technology skills. I agree. Not yeah. a ton, but you, no. it is software, and you do need to learn how to use it. Mm -hmm. And um, if you don't have the patience for learning it, it's going to be trying. Yes. So I, I would say have a little bit of knowledge, and if you don't, have somebody there with you. Mm -hmm. um, Classes, yeah. there. online tutorials, mm -hmm. there's a lot of great ways to learn how to use it. But, um, you know, we jokingly say the smartphone thing, but using the tablet really is a lot like using a smartphone. Yeah. There's, there's buttons that you push, there's processes you follow, 
Um, one thing to remember, some people think, oh, I don't wanna have to take the time to learn how to free motion quilt, so I'm gonna get a pro stitcher. You still have to learn how to use it. Yeah. Now, we don't wanna scare you, because it really is easy to learn how to use. We want you to understand that. But just know that with anything new, there's always a little bit of a learning curve. There is, for yep. sure. Yep. yep. Um, another thing to consider with adding a computer is, as Christina just mentioned, if you are thinking of starting a business, mm -hmm. it's a great way to maximize your, your time and be efficient with your time and also with your throat space because yeah. you can use all of it, as she mentioned. Personality has a lot to do with mm -hmm. it as well. Mm -hmm. Some people are a little bit more type A, perfectionist. Mm -hmm. They want everything the exact same. Yes. So Pro Stitcher is definitely a good option for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other people are a little bit more free and they like to have things not authentic, but yeah. Well, well, to feel handcrafted and yeah. hand drawn and all of those kind of things. Yeah. And that's maybe leaning a little bit more the free motion mm -hmm. way. However, if you still really like that style and you want to use a Pro Stitcher, um, we have the designer software, which actually allows you to create your own designs that could still have that fill. So really, either way, it's just kind of a, it's a, it's a decision of whether you want to add the, I like to call it the ultimate accessory to your long arm. Do you want to add a Pro Stitcher to it? And then there's also the personality type like me that kind of goes back and forth depending uh -huh. on what I'm doing. Uh -huh. And with the Pro Stitcher, you're not stuck just doing Pro nope. Stitcher. Mm -mm. With the touch of one button on here, I can disengage those gears and I'm back in free motion. So you can do both Pro Stitcher mm -hmm. and free motion yep. in the same quilt. I, I usually do a combination of rulers, yep. free motion, Pro Stitcher, everything in the same quilt. So you're do. not stuck mm -mm. just in one area. Exactly. So. Exactly, yeah. Pro Stitcher, it's awesome. It's definitely an option you should consider. Yeah. I love the machines my first you're teacher. looking at. It's really great. So okay, next my turn. Yeah, next one. Sewing machines need to be serviced regularly. How do I get this machine taken care of? Good question. So what we generally say is um, contact your retailer that you mm -hmm. purchased it from, mm -hmm. and we, when when you're using the machine, the maintenance is one drop of oil in the bobbin case with each bobbin change. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do anything else. Change the needle. Oh yeah, change the needle. That's the other thing, but I yeah. mean you do that with a sewing machine anyway. That's not anything yeah. new. But every two years, or depending on the machine, mm -hmm. 10 to 15 million stitches, mm -hmm. you will need to take it to your retailer to have them do the, the spa day. Spa day. Yes. Yes. And um, depending on your retailer, you can take it to them. So you just take the machine head off. Mm -hmm. I put it in the back seat of my car, and I, I get mocked, but I seat belt it in. I do too. <laughs> That's, that's my baby. Yeah, yeah. Weighs, weighs as much or more than some <laughs> oh, of my babies. <laughs> more than my babies. <laughs> um, yeah, and take it into your retailer. Or some retailers will actually come to your house to do the work. So th that mm -hmm. might be something to talk to the retailer yes. about when you're thinking about purchasing. Is it something that they offer or do Is you that need to take it in? Yeah. So. But just make sure and ask that. We, we want to make it really clear that not all retailers offer that. Correct. So that is a conversation you want to be sure and have. But really, the maintenance really is minimal. I yeah. mean, oil, keep it clean, change your needle. Um, every two years, a spa day. Sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, I want yeah. a spa day every two I know. years. Me too. Maybe a little <laughs> more often than that. We'll have to, we'll have to do some checking on that one. Perfect. Okay. So um, the next question that we get, and, and it really is phrased this way, this machine has a really big investment and I'm kind of terrified of it. How do I learn how to use it? Well, guess what? We totally have you covered. Yes. Number one, all of our machines come with education. When you purchase it from that local retailer, they are gonna spend some time training you. There's actually a checklist that they go through that you sign certifying that you have been trained. Um, so you have that local retailer as a resource first. Next, you have us. We have tons of education on both our, our Facebook group and then especially on our YouTube channel. You can go there. We actually have things in playlists and series and groups, and you can find all kinds of things there about ways to use um, your long arm, your pro stitcher, any of that kind of stuff. And then we also have at local retailers, they do events. We have 30 plus national educators that travel all over the U.S 
and they teach events at local retailers. We have hundreds of these every year. Yeah. And so check, be sure and check with your local retailer. You can always attend classes. And last but not least, we actually do retreats here in Salt Lake City in the education studio. Um, yeah. We only do a handful of those a year, but they are super fun. You get to come hands-on, one person to a machine. And you get to hang out with us. I know, it's so much fun. We love, <laughs> we absolutely love doing retreats, it's fun. Now the ultimate education oh. experience that Handy Quilter offers is? Academy. Yeah. So Academy is held here in Utah, not at Handy Quilter headquarters, mm -hmm. but at a conference center. And it is two and a half days of yep. intense training. Yep. And it's a large group of people. So you get that camaraderie mm -hmm. with different quilters. And we just have so much fun. We bring in um, a lot of our field educators. Mm -hmm. We're there as well. Yep. There are different tracks. So depending on what you want to learn, mm -hmm. it's just a great time. It's so great. Lots and lots of fun. So essentially, we have you covered with education. We, everything we even have an education hotline that you can call here at handy quilter if you get stumped and you have a question about something we're here we also have got our technical solutions people that are really great at helping you solve any problems that way so we we, we got you covered no yep. worries when you buy a handy quilter we got you covered so next one okay next question there oh. we kind of talked about this one already yes. but i plan to quilt for others any advice yeah my biggest piece of advice is get a lot of practice first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Throw on just some fabric. ugly fabric <laughs> that you want to get rid Don't of. Do you say that? No. <laughs> and just play with that machine. Mm -hmm. Get really confident with mm -hmm. it. And then um, reach out to guilds mm -hmm. or shops, um, friends, yeah. and say, hey, I've got this new machine. I'm starting a business. Can I do a quilt for you? And a lot of quilt shops, if you actually do a quilt for them, they'll put your business cards in mm -hmm. the shop or they'll um, advertise for you. Yep. So that's a great way to get clientele. Um, but yeah, just get out there and yeah. let people know that that's what you're doing. And you will be surprised at how many people mm -hmm. will start contacting you. Yeah, definitely. And, and we'll just say it one more time again too. If you are thinking of starting a business where you're quilting for other people, we always recommend adding the ProStitcher to your long arm because it does maximize your time. You can actually have the machine running and like be your other machine doing binding on a quilt or piecing or it just, uh, it really, uh, it, it kind of frees you to be able to get quilts done more quickly. Mm -hmm. So it's a great, it's a great addition to consider, especially if you're thinking of quilting for others. Exactly. Yep. Okay. You're nice. ready to pull the trigger. Oh. <laughs> Give your local retailer a call, or you can find your retailer at handyquilter.com, mm -hmm. and there's a locator um, button that you can push, or... You can visit the website yeah. for more information. Yes, and on the website there is a section called, I want to say shop, mm -hmm. and then underneath that it has all of the machines, yep. and you can click on each machine and it will walk you through all of the different um, parts of that machine, mm -hmm. the, the features of that machine, and again the, the layout or blueprint of how much space you would need, and so lots of great information there. There's also a link on there for a comparison chart, yeah. Yeah. and it looks like this and it tells you the different features down the side and if that machine has that feature or not. Yep. So if there's certain features that you're really looking for, you could print this out and mark the ones that you really need and that could help you determine which machine would be the best fit for you. Exactly, exactly. Once again, we've got some really great resources there. Um, you can also visit your local retailer and ask them about this comparison chart. Um, you can also see more information on our Handy Quilter YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, all those great social media outlets. We're there. You can check it out. Um, we even have some stuff on TikTok, apparently. We're getting in with the young crowd. So check <laughs> us out there, too. We've got lots of places where you can find the information you need to help you make the decision about which long arm is perfect for you. And if you still have questions, mm -hmm. feel free to give us a call and we yeah. can help walk you through it. So. Absolutely. Thank you so much for in, uh, joining us today. And we look forward to your purchase of a long arm and that new journey that you're going to begin. So thank you for joining us and have fun quilting. <laughs>